It's your favorite big fast show on the planet. This is Big Fast Show on Q Talk. And today on the Big Fast Show, a video has resurfaced from a family parent and a PTA meeting that happened in the US where a kid told his teacher to shut the fuck up, B. And then when the teacher said, you okay, that, he said, no, B, just said some vulgar language at the teacher and the teacher told them that the boy should be thrown out. So the boy was bounced out like a guy who was bounced out of the club. And people have been having mixed reaction that should they blame the boy? That like, truly does the boy have to go out since he was unruly and so it doesn't affect the other kids. But people have said that no, the teacher handled the matter was the word um, very, very shabby. I should have taught the boy and what he did was wrong. He still disciplined the boy. But people have asked, like, you know what? No, the blame should be on the parents rather because charity begins at the end. Obviously, maybe the boy picked this thing from the parents, three different sides, this angle, but on the queue and the breakfast show, rather, we bear it all and decide what is your verdict. I'm your host, Marvelous Achaf Kimichi, and I'm always joined by Chimirizi Hen Awunaya in our group to see in Canada. Welcome, Chimirizi, the breakfast show. Thank you, Mr. Achafo. Yeah, thank you so much. So, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, whatever gender you may be, watch this video, and when we come back, we'll talk more. Welcome back. Tim Rizzi, you saw that video. For me, I feel like 21st century parenting is already going down the drain, Tim Rizzi. Because for that boy to have that confidence, to talk back at that teacher with such delicate manner, Tim Rizzi, it shows that parenting is down the drain. You see kids disrespect adults all over the place. You can't say any single thing. You know, when you were, when we were young, I don't know about you, but when I was young, they told you how to respect your elders, how to watch the world, give them respect, how to even approach them. Even when they are wrong, you are pushed towards telling them that they are wrong. You must be polite, you must be calm. Calm and keep your point precise, but you must let them know, you must express it with diligence. But now we see children who talk back at, uh, what's the word, adults, who shout at them, who when they, when you see that you have when you match them, because when you feel like what they are doing is wrong, like the kids are actually teenagers, when you find out that what they are doing is wrong, they go as far as in trying to counsel you, maybe make you lose your job. Even we see kids now, the other day I was seeing a 10 year old writing petition to the neighbor's job to get the neighbor sacked, forming all sort of lies. The other day we saw, and what's the word, a 12 year old almost going to juvenile court for accusing. Lost word, I think it was the teacher or whether it's on the school teacher of rape. Tim is we see devil, what's the word, children now going demonic, going devilish, in trying to destroy adults, shout back and adults. To... So, do you feel like truly maybe the 21st century parenting has gone on? Or do you feel like it's just the society in general and maybe even teachers start to be blamed because the teachers are not still disciplining the children? Because people have said that most times that children spend is in schools, and so children, uh, teachers. Also, I'm not living up to the responsibility. What do you feel about parents in this land? Also, what do you feel about the... Yeah, uh, to be honest, everybody has a share of this blame. Society, the church, religion, institution, and the school. I'll first start with... Uh, um, I'll start first start with the society, and I'll start with the government. The government has a whole lot to do. One, the government do not give school the free hands to discipline children. Now you see uh, teachers cannot discipline a child, especially in America now, a child could even pick up a gun. We've had cases where a seven years old took a gun or even a 12 years took a gun to school and killed and shot a teacher. Now that's with the government. The government has a role when it comes to parenting and household. The government has made the cost of living in America so expensive that even a two parenting household need at least two full time jobs to keep that household active. Instead of paying single mothers and paying um, household income and reducing subsidies so that the father and mother can be active at home to take care of their children because, believe it or not, I agree with 
in your not. A parent is the first teacher of a child. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. My father was my first teacher. Everything for me, my boldness, my enthusiasm is both my father's, my mother, and my grandparents, and all my uncles and my relative input into my uh, my life. That's why they say it takes a community to build up a child. So, but my father and my mother were the ones who inculcated disciplines in me. That is the first thing. So the government has its responsibility to reduce inflation so that the father and mother can go to stay at home rather and take care of their kids. But instead, the government has, instead of paying more, reducing subs in subs um, subsidy, instead of reducing the cost of living, out of greed, the American government, the Western government, has instead told American parents to take their own chains by themselves. They have told women, women, you are powerful. You need to go out there and work. A woman has a the most important job in this world. A woman has the job of raising the next generation. A woman should not even have to go to work. A woman should be paid a biological mother, not even just biological, but any mother, biological or guidance should be paid to stay at home to train a child. If a mother and a father isn't there and the child goes into the social service system, we pay social workers to take care of these children. So why deny the, the physical parents or the custodian parents from the same fee? If we could pay social workers, the government should pay parents to take care of their children onto a certain age or reduce a household income. That's the first point. The second point now is teachers at school. The government need to pay teachers well. You need to make sure that anyone in the teaching you know, sector is disciplined. We've seen where the government has a missed priority. Let me give an example. Here in Toronto, a couple of days, I think in the Mississauga district, a trans teacher came with boobs implants. The boobs was bigger than her head. To be very honest, the boobs was bigger than the teachers. The boobs was reaching here to teach seven years old. What are you are you kidding me? A seven years old. How can if I was in that class, how can me self even concentrate? I would say, Auntie, see Auntie's breast, so it is big, oh, it is bigger than the planet. So ah, it was a mockery, it was a joke. So the government needs to go back to the rules and regulations this, guiding the school district and teachers. Teachers should be fine when we see them have misconduct. Now, again, going back to these teachers, yeah, we may blame the parents, but we don't know how these teachers treat these children. Children respond to the way you treat them. If you're nice to a kid, a kid will respond nicely to you. If you're rude to a child, a child also will respond rudely to you. We've seen where many kids have been abused by teachers, and the only way they feel to respond is to call them names or we add verbally. Is this teacher actually innocent? Because we always see now is the response from the child. I have not seen how this teacher trains her kids, her pupils. I used to be in school, and I know a teacher, I'm not going to mention them for security reasons, but I had a teacher that every time she comes to class, she will pick on me. And because she picked on me, I also in turn picked on her. So don't say, many people will say, oh, you have bad money. Da, 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 da. But kids always respond the way they are treated. So these are a collective effort. Now, also the church has a, pl a place to roll. Our religion and faith has a place to roll. So in the schools is one best thing you could do for your children. Me, as a queer person, my child, you are going to Sunday school. They are going to, they are going to teach you because... A child that learns about people's life, and I'm just saying faith, Sunday school, whatever faith, but a child that learns about people's life, hears about different events and stories that have happened, will be able to know, okay, this person did like this, this is what happened. This person did like this, this is what happened. Those were the things that helped us when we were growing up. Kelechi, you and I know that when we were growing up, we had scripture union come to our schools. When we were growing up, we had angels come to our schools. Angels taught us, scripture unions taught us about the Bible. Angels, Ben Carson and the rest of them taught us about biology, sex, 
puberty, and drugs. So many of us are growing up because we had all this NGO interfere into our school curriculums, extra curriculums. We were able to become matured adults ready for society. But the question today is because all these things are not what are being invested into school. Instead of us investing all these things to make these people better adults for tomorrow, we are here in school teaching kids pronouns. He, she, them, there. They, they, she, them, there. How, how does that help anybody? Let's just say, if we are going to teach kids, I'm not saying don't teach them pronouns. Go ahead, teach them pronouns. But the first thing that a child needs to know is a child needs to know to respect everybody. If a child does not respect everybody or is selectively taught to respect certain people, that child is not going to be a good adult. So let us inculcate into kids how to respect everyone, regardless of who they are, where they are, or their, their financial status or whatever. Let's teach kids respect. Let's teach kids, instead of them taking them to amusement parks, taking them to hiking, taking them to road trip, and taking them to LA, let us take kids to, to places. Let us show them the real things about life. Let's take them to workshop. Let's give, let's bring back workshop in schools. When I was in school, we learned how to cook home, home economics. We learned how to cook. We learned how to make soaps. We learned how to build made cards. We learned how to build a, 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 a skill acquisition. That's the word. Let us bring skill acquisition back to the school. The next generation is being left. In Nigeria, let's look at the Nigeria sector. In Nigeria, Nigeria, the, the education child, the child, the child education in Nigeria are so religious, they don't have the workshop. In America, the school system is so involved in LGBTQ matters, they have nothing else. A child will come out, the only thing the child knows is cross-dresser, transgender, he, she, they, there. The child will be a dummy, dumber, dummy. So instead of us creating dummies and slaves for the next generation, we should begin to teach children to be entrepreneurs. Over to you, Mr. Achafo. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Jim. Is it? I think that you've basically said it all, and we can wrap up with that. My own is that this 21st century, everything is almost going down the drain, and we must take decisive action to protect a lot of things, including our children. Children are gifts from God, and they should be protected, nurtured, cared, and instilled discipline into and not instilled rubbish, vagabond, and whatever is going there, wickedness, and what we are seeing today, where even people are trying to bring their children to social media who can be the most, who can train the most, most times for negative things. It is well. That's why I offer you the big fashion for this episode. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment what you feel in the comment section below. Next episode. And before we go, before we go, before we go, I forgot to say thank you, subscribers. We have reached the 3,000 subscribers. Thank you for clicking the subscribe one. button. Thank you for commenting. Wow. Thank you for supporting Q Talk. We wouldn't have gotten to this far without your love, without your support, yes. and without your kindness. We're, we're heading, we're heading towards 10,000 very soon. I can see it. I can, I can feel it gradually, gradually. You see. Little drops of water making mighty ocean. So we are not going backward. We are going forward forever. And thank you so much. At least these days now we we'll call them organic subscribers because they love the content. They follow the content. Not before watching me say that we're selling sex sweets. <laughs> See you next episode. See you next episode. <laughs> See you <next> <laughs> Okay. 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 Okay.